I want to show you guys how to build a autocomplete component in React. And we'll be using this uh, library here called Headless UI. It's by the folks that bring you Tailwind CSS. So we're going to look at specifically this combo box component. They do have a headless UI for both React and Vue. We're going to be looking at React and we'll be using Next.js during our example. And specifically, I want to show how you can use this component here with asynchronous data. So let's say you have an API that's returning the search results. We want to be able to hit that API and render those search results in this component. If you look at all of the examples in their documentation page, they have essentially all of the possible values from that the combo box can show hard-coded on the client. Um, I think a lot of times you would want to have a search box and you want to hit your API with a search query and whatever the server returns, those are the items that will show in the combo box. We'll do this with Next.js, so let's start there and let's get a Next.js app going. All right, here we go, so let's, uh, let's get a TypeScript project going here and let me open up a shell. And we'll say headless UI combo box demo. Cool. And so next thing, I'm going to go ahead and open IntelliJ. Let's start the development server here. OK, and now we can see our boilerplate application here. So let's bring in the libraries we're going to use. So just to start, I'm going to bring in Tailwind CSS and headless UI. So let's do that. Yarn add headless UI. Let's create the dev dependency, bring in these things. Oh, hold on, I messed that uh, command up. Let me make sure I say yarn add. All right, and then uh, let's initialize our Tailwind config. All right, and so it's going to create the Tailwind config and the post CSS config. And let's just copy in this. So now let's, uh, let's go to global CSS and set up our Tailwind utilities and whatnot. And now we should be good. I just want to um, get rid of all of the boilerplate stuff. All right, so now let's just create a basic container that we're going to build our app in. So I'm going to say combo box example. And then here is where I will put the combo box. And I should have Tailwind going here. So let's just say text 3XL font bold. And let's run our development server now. Awesome. So it looks like Tailwind is set up because we see our 3XL font and pretty much all the other styling is out of there. So first thing is let's just get this thing working locally, like the way that they have it set up with their basic example here. I'll just copy in the, the people here and let's just copy this logic here. Then we're going to have our combo box and we're going to put it in right here. And let's just import that. Perfect. Oh, let me also import use state. So yeah, there it is. And there's no styling, but that's kind of the magic. The styling is up to us. Looks like it was working good. Um, so if I say like K-E-N, we can see the correct filtering happening there. Let's jump back over to the docs. The next section here is talking about styling different states. So when you hit the down arrow key and, and you're selecting or you're hovering over a different option, you know, we want to show that in, in a highlighted way so that you know what you're currently selecting. Let's see what they're doing here. If it's active, they're just giving it a blue background on some white text, otherwise on a white background with black text. Also, it looks like if it's selected, then they'll render a check icon here. Looks like this check icon is part of hero icons. We'll bring that in as well for the example, just so we can get it working the way it is here. So let's say yarn add hero icons at React. All right. Looks like that's good. Okay, now let's just make the changes to basically do what they've set up here. It looks like we're doing the render prop here. We're rendering this as a fragment here and make sure you import that. Then here's where we're setting up the actual render prop. We'll destructure the active and selected property out of there. And let's get our list 
go in here, or list item rather. Looks like they've also changed the structure of this data up here. So let's let's go ahead and change that as well. Looks like we're getting the ID in there and looks like we have a error there. So let's just fix that. Okay, and then we can render the name. So at this point, it should be the exact same. So let's just double check that. Yep. Perfect. So now let's see if we can capture this active state. So looks like what they're doing here is just setting a class name. Basically, if it's active, then we'll say BG blue 500 and text white. Otherwise, white background with black text. Okay, so it looks like we've also added a display value change here. So let's add that in. So person, and then we'll say person.name. So since we're dealing with an object now, we need to render the name off that object and not the whole object, right? Looks like there's a TypeScript issue here. So I'm going to optional chain here. If that is undefined, then just give me a empty string. Hmm. Okay, very interesting. So it looks like there's a TypeScript issue going on here. So let me set up this as an interface. So I'm gonna say interface person, ID number, and then name string. And then we'll call this a person array. And let's see if I can tell that it's, this is a person. So I think what I need to do is just tell it, hey, this is a person. Okay, there we go. And I think we don't need to have that null check here. So I think that gets us uh, pretty close to what the documentation says. Okay, so now we should see active state is being rendered with the blue background here. Cool. So now let's add in the check icon as well to show off the selected render prop. So selected and check icon. And let's see what that looks like. Wow. Okay. Well, there's the check icon. Let me close the inspector here. Uh, you think that's big enough? Let's add a class name here to fix that. So let me jump over here. So I'm going to say class name, and then I'm just going to give it like a width of five and inline block here, and also a little bit of margin right. Okay, so that looks much better. So there you go. If you wanted to render the selected item, that's how you could do it. For now, I think I'm going to just comment this out because I don't want to have a check mark for this situation. So that's how you can style it based on some some of the render props. So let's see what they're talking about here with this using data attributes. So the way this is going to work is we can target the different states here without having to use render props and conditionally handle things based on the render props. We can just use these different modifiers here to give it the style we want. So I like this better than the render props because really the render props are the way that, that we're going to use it here are just going to be used for styling. So I'm going to just take these out. Let me get rid of the fragment and let me get rid of the list item. And so now we can just add the class name here. We can say UI active. So this is the modifier that they're exposing here. So instead of using the render prop, we're just using these modifiers and then UI not active. And then when it's not active, we're just doing the white background black text. In order to get this to work, we need to use this headless UI Tailwind CSS plugin here. So let's go ahead and add that headless UI slash Tailwind CSS. And then we'll hop over to the Tailwind config and let us just require it how it comes. All right, cool. So it looks like we're good there. Let's start the dev server again. And now when we take a look at our combo box implementation, this should apply these class names. Perfect. We can either use the render props and do conditional logic. I like this approach though, because it kind of hides away some of that complexity and you can just use the class names and, and, and not clutter up render logic with render props. So let's just keep moving down here. Okay, so it, it does look like there's some pretty useful bits of information in here. So, so essentially it's saying that whatever objects we're passing into the combo box needs to refer to the same object. So let me show you really quick if I open up a node terminal here. So I'm going to say like let A equals foo, this simple object here. And then I'm going to say let B equal foo. And it's essentially the same object, but when I say A equals B or A equals 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 B, it says false. So that's kind of what this is trying to guard against here. But if I say A dot foo equals B dot foo, you can see that's true. So what we can do here in the combo box properties here 
here is we can just say when you're comparing these objects, we want to compare it by the ID. So that way, let's see what's going on here. All right, so doing it as it suggests in the documentation doesn't seem to work as I expected. The TypeScript, at least, um, it might it might be working, but TypeScript looks to be complaining. So let's see if we can get it to work with a compare function. So if I say a b, um, then a dot name dot to lowercase equals b dot name dot to lowercase. And so that seems to take care of this problem with the TypeScript. So let me just bring this uh, compare function out of the render. And I'm going to say compare people. And I'm just going to assign it like that. And it's going to be person, person, and it's going to return a Boolean. And let's just pass that in directly. And so now we can be a little less careful about making sure that the same object reference is passed in. So yeah, I like that. That's good. All right. So I think now we've got it in a state good enough here that we can next style this thing and make it look good. So that'll be the first thing we'll do. And the second thing we'll do is hook it up to our API and basically get the results of the people from our API instead of hard coded on the client. So let's do that. Let's see what we can do to style this combo box. So first thing I know I want to do is put a border around the. Maybe it can even just be like a uh, a little bit of off white here. Maybe I'll do a hundred. So I know I don't want it to be this this large. So let me just make a container here. So I'm gonna say like max width medium. Let me make sure I'm opening my dev server. Okay, so let me start at my dev server. Sorry about that. All right, so now let's bring this all to the center. I'm going to bring the title to the center. And I'm going to make the combo box full width. And I'm going to give it a little bit of padding here. And then I think what I'm going to do is give it like a search magnifying glass icon. So let's call it magnifying glass. We'll give it a solid one. Let's go ahead and give it the width and height of five, and then let's give it like a medium gray. Okay, perfect. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to put this in a div because I want these to be sitting there together. So let me say inline block. I'm going to keep it like that for now. Let me say that this is flex here and then items center. Let me give it the gray 100 and then let me give it some padding here. So now we have this issue where we want the outline to cover the whole area here. So, all right, so let me do outline none here. Um, so now we don't get the, the browser outline. Then I want to say focus within, and then I'm going to give it the ring of two, and then also focus within ring blue 500. Perfect. So we got the ring showing up around the combo box, just like we wanted it. We probably want to move this focus within up to the combo box itself. So I'm going to wrap everything here with a div. And I'm just going to move this stuff here. Here. I want the whole area, all of the options as well, to be highlighted as well. Let me just give this a little bit of margin from the title. I'll just give it a little bit of uh, space here from the top. I want to put some shadow on this thing. So I'm going to say... Shadow XL. And so now we got the nice shadow effect. Let's update the styling of the options. We just want to give it some space in between uh, each option. So we'll do that by just giving it some padding. And let's uh, give it some padding on the sides as well. So that looks pretty good. Um, another thing I want to do is just soften up this text a little bit. I'm just going to say it's, let me, let me just change it over here. So instead of text black, I'm just going to say like text gray 800 and just give it a little bit of a softer text. I think that's that's pretty good. Um, the next piece here is we want a loading state to show up. Over here on the right side is where we'll show up our loading state because now we're going to start switching to, instead of sourcing the data from static data that's stored on the client, we're going to start pulling this data from our API. But really quick, I will just create a simple loading state. And what I like to do for loading states is I like to go to the Tailwind website and search for animate. And they have this really nice <laughs> loading spinner here. I like to just pull that in um, and I usually just take the inspector 
and just grab it here and copy this element. I'm just going to create it right here in line. I'm just say like function loading spinner and it's just going to return an SVG. Okay, and it looks like they have some classes on there. We'll try those classes. They they might suit our purpose fine. So let's just go to where we had the magnifying glass and let's just put in the loading spinner right here and see what that looks like. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so we can see it showing up right here. So we do want to change the color of this. So I'm going to say this is going to be text gray 500 or I'm going to change the margin here. So let me just see. So I think the margin's fine how it is. So I'm just going to keep it like that. And that's pretty much what we'll do for our loading spinner. And so eventually what we'll want is something like loading state. And we'd only render this if it is loading. Okay, so that's kind of the basic styling we'll do. So now let us move towards rendering this data, but from our API. So since we're using Next.js, we'll just use the Next.js API routes. I'm going to go to API. I'm going to create a file called person. So this will be our person route. Maybe let's just go ahead and take the uh, example that they gave and copy that in. Let's go ahead and just take the data and we'll just put it on our back end here. I'm going to export this because we're going to need it over here. And there it is. So let's import our person type. And we're not returning this data type. We're going to be returning a list of persons from our endpoint. Another thing is we are going to need to bring in uh, some of this logic, some of this filtering logic over uh, to our backend as well. So let's just take that out and let's bring that over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a query parameter and that query parameter is going to be called Q, which is kind of the common query parameter for a query string. So let me write it this way. So I'm going to say Q and I'm going to say Q query.q dot to string. Okay, so it's uh, mad that it's possibly undefined. So let's just optional chain there. And if it is not there, then we will just have an empty string. Let me just call this query then. Okay, so just to recap, our API is going to take a query parameter called Q. So that will be the string that we want to filter by. If it's present, we will use it. Otherwise, we will just have an empty string. And then when we filter the people, if it if it's equal to that empty string, we'll just return all the people. Otherwise, we'll filter it by that query value. So then when we return our JSON, what we will do is return it like this, filtered people. It's just going to return a list of the filtered people as the JSON. And so yeah, that's pretty much all there's going to be to our back end is basically the same stuff as we had in our front end. We're just moving it to the back end. Now what we'll do is at first it's it's undefined. There's there's no, no one selected. Or let me say person or null and then we'll say it's null. Okay, so now we need to connect our front end to the new back end. And the way I like to do this in Next.js is to use a client-side fetching library. I'm going to use a library called SWR, and I'm going to just add in SWR here. Let me make sure I just start up the dev server again. And so now I want to use SWR. So I'm going to say data. Okay, so use SWR. So we've added that. So now we're going to set our key. So for our key, we'll put our API route in here. And then we'll also put the query as well. And then we'll define a fetcher function. And we'll do that right here. So async function fetcher. And then remember, this takes the URL and this takes the query. So let me just type this in like string then the query is a string. And it's going to return a promise of person array. And so we really want this to be slash API slash person. And so now let's use the fetch API and hit our API. We're getting the data back and we'll say await 
fetch. It's going to be the URL. And then we're going to have this query parameter Q equals query. Once we uh, get that, then we will say, give me the JSON from that. That is our fetch function. And we're going to use SWR to fetch it. All right, so let me change this up here to undefined. And we will have undefined over here. And so now that will satisfy TypeScript errors going on here in the comma box library. Let me get rid of the loading spinner here and let's just make sure that we are getting our data back. We're going to call this filtered people like we did before. Okay. And so now it's just we got to make sure that we're not rendering any options if there's nothing returned by the API. So so maybe what I'll do is I'll give it a default value. All right, so the fallback data will be just an empty list. We need to go to the display value here. And if this is undefined here, we need to just render a empty string. Let me make sure that the compare people is gonna work okay for us. So let me just make sure that these are gonna handle the null case here. Okay, perfect. So now we can see when I type, it's going to my API and it's returning those results. So that's just what we wanted. One thing that does look pretty bad here is the browser autocomplete is coming up here. So what we want to do here is tell the input that we do not want autocomplete because we got our own autocomplete. So I'm going to say autocomplete equals off. And so now we shouldn't get any annoying values there. That's pretty much how we do it there. It thinks that it's going to be undefined. It shouldn't be because I'm giving it the fallback data. But just to make TypeScript happy, let me just optional chain here. I'm going to introduce a sleep timer on the back end because I just want to simulate a loading state because right now it's just going to come very quickly and I just want to experiment with the loading state here. So I'm going to await a new promise and then I'm going to set timeout and just give it two seconds here. And let me just make this an asynchronous function. And so now our API should wait two seconds before responding. Let's test that. Okay, yeah, so you could see it there. You probably also saw that it was acting pretty quick on some of the other queries. And the reason why it does that is because this use SWR is caching the queries. That's kind of a benefit of using these client fetching libraries is they'll handle caching on the client. So it's not going to hit your backend as hard because it's going to be caching these request responses on the client. So like next time I type in this same query, it'll show up quicker. So now what I want to do is I want to show the, the loading state when this thing is fetching. So the SWR library wants you to tell if it's loading in this way. So let me go grab the error here. And I'm going to just delete this fallback data for now. Essentially, we want to be able to determine the difference between null and an empty result. So I'm going to say const is loading. And then the way they're saying here is, hey, if there's no error and there's no data, then it's loading. Or if there's no filtered people in our case, let me put in the is loading here. That should take care of it. So let's double check and let me see if I can get it to load. There we go. So there's our loading spinner and there we go. And so, and now it's going to be cached. So if I type in that same query again, it'll pop up immediately. Let's see again, I'll do NOT. And there you go. There is another example of the loading state going. So that's pretty much how to create an autocomplete component with headless UI using Next.js and using a asynchronous way of doing it. So instead of having all your options hard coded on the client, you have your options are, are coming from your server. And we're using this client side fetching library, SWR in order to fetch those options. We're able to take the different states from SWR's response, and from that we're able to determine if 
we're loading or not. And if it's loading, we're able to render a loading spinner. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole entire example. So let me know in the comments if this was helpful or if there was anything that you got stuck on or, or if there was anything that was confusing or not working for you. Was this useful? Was this helpful? Would you want more content like this? All this would be good feedback. So, so yeah, let me know and yeah, look forward to hearing from you.